Hey American Literature friends, this is a video going over William Carlos Williams and four of his poems, Landscape with the Fall of Icarus, The Young Housewife, The Red Wheelbarrow, and This is Just to Say, which may have become his most famous poem even though it's this very small just sort of image driven poem. So we'll get to those, the last two, The Red Wheelbarrow and This is Just to Say, we'll kind of put them together at the end. Uh, we're going to start with Landscape with the Fall of Icarus. Uh, Landscape with the Fall of Icarus, we're going to start with it because it's an ekphrastic poem, which is one of the concepts that's on the syllabus. Um, an ek ekphrastic poem is a poem that is, well, let's just pull it up in the terminology here. Let's scoot over here to the terminology and just pull it up. Here we go. An ekphrastic poem is a poem based on a piece of visual art. Here we go. Uh, ekphrastic poetry, it's a uh, written, often a poetic response to uh, another piece of art. And the original piece of art is often a piece of visual art, a painting, a picture, a sculpture, something like a sketch, something like that. Ekphrastic poetry often aspires to translate that visual, that painting, uh, or that sculpture or something to words to um, to take the visual and turn it into the linguistic um, and to vividly describe the original piece of art. Uh, this is an ekphrastic poem and you can see Landscape with the Fall of Icarus there, the poem, but it's probably worth thinking about uh, the, the painting first. Here is the painting let's make it big. One of the things that's important to understanding this poem is understanding this picture. You also need to understand the Icarus myth. Let's see if we can find Icarus here as well. Uh, Icarus and his father Daedalus are part of Greek mythology. Daedalus, Icarus's father, is the person who invented mazes uh, and he was paid, he was commissioned to build a maze on the island of Crete um, and then, once he had built the maze, he and his son, Icarus, were imprisoned on the island of Crete. So Daedalus came up with the plan for he and his son to fly back to the mainland of Greece. Uh, Daedalus built two sets of wings using wax and bird feathers and some rope. Uh, Daedalus, being a good father, was like, I'm going to try this first, be sure it works. Um, Daedalus... Uh, flew. He was very careful to fly just above the waves of the ocean between the island of Crete and the mainland of Greece. He got back safely to Greece. He turned um, back to Icarus, but he had told Icarus, be, you got to be careful. Don't fly too low or the waves of the ocean, the Mediterranean Sea, will knock you down and drown you. you got to be careful not to fly too high or the heat from the sun will melt your wax wings. So you got to stay in just this perfect height above the waves, but not too high, not too close to the sun. Well, Icarus, after his father had got back to the mainland, and you can see this painting here of what happened, Icarus uh, started flying to the mainland following his dad, uh, but he got too excited, you know, as, as anybody would when they were flying, you'd be excited. You'd be like, oh, I'm flying, it's working. Um, and so Icarus flew too high, he, he started seeing how high he could go, got too close to the sun, the wax got soft and hot, melted, and Icarus uh, fell into the sea and drowned. And this is all part of Greek mythology, a fairly common, well-known Greek myth, Icarus and Daedalus, because it explains how we got mazes, um, but it also is this, it has come to be seen as this sort of uh, metaphor or fable for like, you know, listening to the advice and not going to extreme to things like that. Don't, as they tell you even here, sparking the idiom, don't fly too close to the sun. Um, what Peter Bruegel, who painted this poem during the Renaissance, did is depict the fall of Icarus. This is the sort of the day that Icarus fell. But you can see in this painting, and I've got it pulled up, it's a little bit bigger than the screen, and you can't even see Icarus. You see the island of Crete there off in the distance in the corner, but what you can see and especially if you read this painting from left to right and top to bottom, as we are trained to do reading English, if you read this poem from left to right and from top to bottom, Icarus is the last thing you get to. 
And what you get instead, instead is in this painting, it's spring. And this farmer, you know, you can see that this tree is blooming here. These seas are out, these ships are out on the sea doing business. Uh, their sails are full, so they're out sailing around. Um, it's just a bright, nice, sunny day. Everybody in this little town here in the harbor is, you know, off doing their business. Then you've got the farmer here as we start to go down into the left. You've got this farmer here plowing the field, getting ready to plant his crops. This shepherd here down at the bottom, he's taking care of his sheep. He's doing his business. And then you finally get down to the right bottom here. You've even got this little guy here. Uh, it looks like he's fishing or doing something in the water. But you finally get down here to the bottom, and here is Icarus. And you only get Icarus's bottom half, just his two legs here. Uh, because he's already drowning just his two legs or he has fallen in the ocean. He is in the process of drowning so by the by all the guidelines that we use to read to go from top to bottom left to right Icarus is literally the last thing on the page the smallest thing on the page He's in not the foreground, but the background. He's just this sort of small little thing and part of the point of this painting is when something tragic is happening to you and it feels like it's the end of the world, everybody else is just going on about their business, you know, and they don't know your personal business and they don't know you, they don't feel your personal tragedies. And that's part of the point of this painting is you're the star of, of your own story, you know, and this is a big tragedy for Icarus in his own story, but everybody else is just going on about their business. This guy, you can see the shepherd, he's just looking off into the distance. He doesn't even know somebody's falling into the water. The farmer's got his head down, he's tending to his business. This guy's off, you know, Icarus is off here dying. It's a big dramatic event for him and, and for his father, and everybody else is just going on about their business. It's not even phasing them. And you can feel that in Williams's ekphrastic poem, Landscape with the Fall of Icarus, which is the same title as the painting. Um, according to Bruegel, when Icarus fell, it was spring. As we just talked about, you know, the farmer was plowing his field. The whole pageantry of the year was awake, tingling with itself. You know, it's spring, everything's coming to life, everything's starting to bloom and blossom. Sweating in the sun that melted the wings wax. Icar, you know, the wings that Daedalus had made and told them don't fly too close to the sun. Unsignificantly, off the coast, there was a splash, quite unnoticed. This was Icarus drowning. So just like the, um, just like the painting, William Carlos Williams takes this big dramatic event that is in some ways like one of the most famous myths of Greek mythology and sort of pushes it off into the background and is like it's just this little thing down in the corner of the painting and he sort of uh, William Carlos Williams talks about spring and everything blooming and blossoming and everybody going about their business and then at the end he just sort of tucks in Icarus drowning just like Bruegel uh, tucks in Icarus into the bottom corner of the painting. Uh, so you can feel how in that painting he is trying to capture the spirit or the theme or the imagery, whatever you want to call it, of that painting. The next poem we are going to jump to is The Young Housewife. This is one of Williams' early poems. Um, it has remained famous, I think, because one of the things that, one of the themes or ideas that William Carlos Williams comes back to, and this is one of the things that makes him a modernist, is this sort of theme of people feeling isolated, people seeing each other but not really connecting, feeling disconnected or unable to reach out or interact with each other, people seeing each other and yet remaining at a distance. And so you have this narrator who sees this young housewife and who sort of wonders what her day is like and, and wonders what she's up to and wonders what kind of interior life she has. But it's really this, these two people who see each other but remain separate. The young housewife. At 10 a.m., the young housewife moves about in negligee. So she's in, she's in her house, but she's got like her, um, she's not dressed to go out. She's got like her, um, her sleeping clothes on. The wooden walls of her husband's house. I pass solitary in my car. So they're sort of shut off from each other. The walls of the house, the windows of the car, the window, you know, they're shut up in their own little containers. Then again, she comes to the curb to call the ice man, the fish man. And this is, this poem was written back 
in the time when the, like people delivered ice and delivered milk and delivered fish. So she has to go out and interact with them and order stuff and pick up her orders. Stand shy, uncorseted, tucking in stray ends of hair, and I compare her to a fallen leaf. So he sees her again. She's not like dressed up and ready to go out. So he feels like he's glimpsing her in this kind of intimate way, this sort of like inside the house way, because she hasn't got herself fixed up. She's not dressed up nicely. And so again, you get this sense that even though he's seeing her in this sort of intimate way that you might only see her in the house because she's not dressed up to go out, they're still sort of isolated from each other. All he can do is just watch her. The noiseless wheels of my car rush with a crackling sound over dried leaves as I bow and pass, smiling. And so he sees her, he has this sort of moment of like seeing her, really seeing her, and, and sort of seeing her in this intimate way because she's not dressed and she ain't got her hair fixed and things like that. But then all he, but he can't make contact, he can't connect with her, all he can do is just drive on. And so he can see her and wonder what kind of life she has and what kind of complex interior, you know, what she does inside her house or, or what she thinks inside her mind, but they can't connect and all he can do is drive on. It's just this, he contemplates her and thinks about her, you know, most people read this as him just sort of watching this pretty young woman who has some sort of life inside her house and with her husband that he can't imagine and he can't connect with that. All he can do is just pass by. Uh, one, of the, one of the themes that modernism and that William Carlos Williams comes back to over and over again is this theme of isolation and feeling like we can't connect with one another. And part of the problem of the modern world with all of the technology and the speed that we move at is, the trade-off for that is we're moving faster and in that speed, we're not able to slow down and really deeply connect with each other. The other two poems, The Red Wheelbarrow and This Is Just To Say, are often taught together because they are these very small, people are often like, I don't even understand what makes this a poem, I don't know why this is a poem. Um, they are some of William Carlos w Williams' more experimental work, and in his experimental work, all he is often trying to do is paint this vivid, memorable picture for you. He's trying to make a big word picture for you. People read these poems and, and read them as metaphors sometimes, like the red wheelbarrow is sometimes read as a metaphor for communism. This is just to say is sometimes read as this metaphor for sex or sex or sexual contact. I don't really, that's not useful to me. You can, you can make that, you can superimpose that, you can put that on these poems if you want it to be there. But the more, it seems to me, the more you know about William Carlos Williams, the more you see that often what he's really trying to do is just leave some lasting, it's almost like he's trying to show you a picture, like a photograph, and hold a photograph up to you and like, and say, look at, look at how cool this photograph is. Look at this vivid photograph. All he's trying to do in some of these more experimental poems is show you a really vivid and intense image. So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rain beside the white chickens. And all that's really often in these poems, especially the red wheelbarrow, and this is just to say, you feel like you are getting a moment in the middle of action like the red wheelbarrow got somebody was out using it and working and then didn't put it away and it got left out in the rain glazed with rain beside the white chickens so somebody was out working with it and left it out in the rain and now it's wet it's, it's got rain all over it but and that's all he wants to show you is this tool that got left outside in the rain and now it's just shiny with rain water um, so it's just this sort of image of the wheelbarrow and the beside the chickens wet after the rain and then and that's all he's trying to show you is just this sort of intense vivid image this is just to say is a little more complicated because the last stanza of it adds kind of another layer to it this poem has also had sort of a kind of like third or fourth life because it had goes through these periods on social media where people make these sort of satirical versions of it, like this is just to say, and then they'll kind of, you know, I've eaten the chocolate bar that was in the refrigerator or something like that. Like it, there's all these, if you Google, this is just to say, you will get all these satirical versions that people have posted on different kinds of social media. The original version 
I've eaten the, this is just to say, I've eaten the plums that were in the icebox. Icebox, an old fashioned word for refrigerator. So somebody left some plums in the refrigerator and the narrator ate them. And which you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me. They were delicious, so sweet and so cold. That third stanza, that last little group adds another layer to it because the first two stanzas are, forgive me, I've eaten your food. You, you know, this is just, uh, this is just to, it's, it's almost, it almost feels like this poem is like a little sticky note somebody stuck on the refrigerator that's like, hey, sorry, I ate your food. I, I ate your, this fruit that you were probably saving. Um, and then the, but then that third section twi adds a little twist to it because it's forgive me. They were delicious, so sweet and so cold. So it's like I gave in to temptation. And it's also this sort of, you know, shoving it in their face because, like, they were, they were delicious, so sweet and so cold. And I got to eat them all and you're not going to get to. Like, they were delicious, and they were sweet and cold, and you'll just have to take my word for it because I ate them. So you get this sort of double layer of, ha ha, I ate your food. That's why some people sometimes read this as this sort of metaphorical sexual poem because it's like, I got into your icebox and got your got your sweets kind of thing. Um, again, that's that's not really useful to me. That's just something that people want to add on to it to make it be more than it is. Which, just like the red wheelbarrow, is this intense image of this intense sensory image, either of sight or of taste. In in the case of this, is just to say. But one of the things William Carlos Williams was trying to do, and this is where you can really feel him being different than a poet like Robert Frost, who is who is much more traditional. William Carlos Williams is trying to strip, strip everything else away and say, part of what poetry is supposed to do is not tell you anything, but show you things very vividly and very intensely. It's almost like poetry is an anti-recipe or anti-GPS directions, where a recipe just tells you what to do. It doesn't show you anything, it just tells you a set of steps, just like a GPS giving you a set of directions. It's almost like poetry, especially beginning with modernism, is this like, we're not gonna tell you anything, we're not gonna explain anything, we're just gonna show you things very vividly and very intensely. And, that's, and you can really feel that in the red wheelbarrow, and this is just to say, it's just this very intense show. So that gets us started with William Carlos Williams' uh, landscape with the fall of Icarus, it, um, one of his ekphrastic poems. He has others, including another one in the textbook. Um, the Young Housewife, The Red Wheelbarrow, and this is just to say. Uh, we'll have another video that covers the rest of William Carlos Williams' poems, but like I said, hopefully this gets us started and gets us into one of the terminology with the ekphrastic poem. Hope this is useful to you. Thank y'all for your time.